brought to you by Copal. A Bloomberg UTV Pulse initiative. You're watching Bloomberg UTV. Welcome to episode two of Artwise. Today, the spotlight is going to be on the recovery of the art market and the outlook uh, looking into 2011 and beyond. First episode, of course, we spoke to you about art as an investment tool. Today, we go one step further. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Good to be here again. All right. So I guess we can get kick started straight away by looking a bit at the history of uh, the evolution of art, I guess. That's right. But before we get into that, let's first introduce you to our panelists. We have with us Mr. Bos Krishnamachari with us, a very well-known artist a curator and now he's running his own gallery BMB as well. Also here with us is Mr. Gopal Mechandani. He's an art writer and a chartered accountant as well. A perfect mix of <laughs> art and business. And we have with us uh, actor and dancer Shivani Vazir. She's going to be speaking to us on just purely loving art and really not caring about the market there. <laughs> but first, before we go any further into this discussion, Let's take a look at a brief history of the art market when we're going to be talking about how it's going to perform in 2010 and 2011. Let's also find out how it performed when it first started to pick up from the 1990s. The Indian art market has undergone transformational changes since the arrival of Sotheby's in the late 1990s through Thaya Mehta's phenomenal Mahisasura in 2005 to the present resurgence. Mahisasura was auctioned for a record $1.6 million at Christie's in London. Since then, creations of masters like Raza, Souza and Hussein have met with rapturous reception in international auctions, setting new heights for Indian art. All these artists were pioneers of Indian contemporary art post-independence. So I think all of them are very, very important. Tayyab has got a very small body of works. As far as his aesthetic excellence is concerned, or to say aesthetic value, his aesthetic value was established long back. I mean, when I met him in 1988 for the first time, his aesthetic value was already established. The market value was not established, yes. But it's not just the master's works that enjoyed a great run at the market. We reached a point where contemporary art was riding as high a wave and sometimes even competing with the prices of the masters. So both Gupta sculpture, a very hungry god, was auctioned for a record $1.4 million at Saffron Art. And Bharati Kerr's iconic elephant set a new benchmark at $1.53 million. For Kenosia, celebrated artworks represent not only an investment in alternative asset, but also in timeless wisdom. Art is beautiful. The true value of art far transcends the usual business cycles that most investments encounter. Oh yeah, they're starting to, I mean, the market is starting to have some confidence again. I mean, where we're seeing the market inside of India be um, coming back the fastest is, of course, for the more established artists. So it makes sense. People feel confident buying Hussein or Ram Kumar or R.P. to sing because these are senior artists that are, you know, their, 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 their places in history are well established. So the next step would be artists such as Atul Dodia, Subodh Gupta, um, you know, who have pretty much made their reputation already and they're working with serious galleries both in India and outside of India. So people feel comfortable with that. Okay, that's a little bit about the history. Let's get straight down to the recovery process and looking ahead uh, into the art world. Well, let's start off with you. You have an interesting vantage point being an artist yourself and being associated with the gallery. 
is the worst over from what we saw from 2008 to about 2010, you think? And is this perhaps a sustained recovery on the basis of what we've seen from Parthi and Raza of late? I think it's getting better and better. And it is going to be really a good time for Indian art, you know, in, in international market and stuff like that. And lots of people are looking at the younger generation of artists, you know, um, young talent, you know, people are scouting for young talent. And they, they can see there are lots of, you know, wealth underneath their canvas or drawings or sculpture or installation, etc. Nowadays, everybody is looking at not just canvas, they are looking at, you know, for example, Bhartik here, she's a contemporary artist. And when you look at the surface of uh, elephant, you know, it is with the sperms and stuff like that, you know, but, you know, people are not looking at beauty. Beauty is not the thing, you know. People are interested in the content, you know. So the collectors are learning more aware and they are, you know, there are a lot of, lots of potential in contemporary art. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me just get in Shivani at this point. Uh, Shivani, when we hear both say that people not really looking at beauty. Now, you're someone who's been uh, looking at art, collecting art, purely uh, following it as a passion, really, for the pure love of art. Uh, you think you're ever going to reach a point when you buy a painting thinking that its value is going to appreciate in the next five years? You know, one of the things that Bo said about content, that's absolutely true. When he said about beauty, that's not true because in content there is beauty and perhaps what Bose is saying is the normal uh, vision of beauty being perfect, uh, perfect skin, a perfect feature but to me beauty is something that mesmerizes you and art in a sense is recording whatever's going on around us it could be in your environment, it could be in your mind and in that quality of going into someone's mind or their lives and what's happening around them lies the beauty and in that beauty lies the content. And I think um, art is something that has been a part of our DNA forever. It's not something that we say, now there's a market for it, so now people should start collecting. It's a natural instinct of a human being to want to record, to want to draw. Drawing is very relaxing, is very rejuvenating. And to record our history has always been a passion. Fair point. Uh, Gopal, uh, let's talk a little bit about the road ahead. Uh, Sarah in the previous episode was raising the point with one of our guests as to whether a couple of these recent paintings are actual green shoots off the market, uh, whether it's Raza or Bharti, or are these just flash in the pans? And, uh, you know, because the size of the Indian market, as we were discussing last time around as well, is very, very small. I mean, when you look ahead, you don't buy anything with the prospect of it not appreciating. You want to create sure, wealth. Sure, sure, you know? absolutely. Yeah, you'll have uh, the yeah. Oshivani here yeah. and there yeah, where yeah. You, know, you buy for the love sure, of it. But sure. if people yeah. are from the middle yeah. class yeah. that are looking to get into it, they want to make money off yeah. it. Let's sure, sure, you know, sure. be clear about that. Yeah. Yeah. So is this a good time to perhaps be entering if you're looking out, say, maybe one, two years? Yeah, I think this is a good time because uh, for one, we just come out and the bubble has burst and prices are down and from the top, from the peak. Okay. See, the thing is that it's not buying any art. It's about, you know, the, the key thing, the key uh, word I use is cultural consensus. So if you believe that the artist is good and there's a cultural consensus of the artist, not like for instance, Souza, Nasreen, Mohammadi, they, they all have a cultural consensus. Quite a fair point there. But uh, what, what we'd also like to bring up in this discussion here is um, of, of the modern versus contemporary. Yes. As a collector, would you also put in works, or your money on your contemporary artists? Yeah, I've got a contemporary art. Yeah? Of course I have. Right. And there's, there's no fear involving their performance, their stability. See, the thing is that uh, when I collect, okay, I collect for two reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, primary, I, I collect because I love art. I'm right. passionate about it. And uh, art is part of my life, okay, at some level. But obviously when I put money, you know, you know buy, when I buy this thing, there has to be a threshold. You know, beyond a point, you know, I have to look at, as a collector, you know, you have to look at what I'm paying for it. Right. Okay, so there's a threshold. Okay. So beyond that, it's not about you know, passion and, you know, uh -huh. all of that. There's a, there's a threshold for everybody. Right. We'll, we'll have to take a tiny break at this point of time. We're going to continue with this discussion yeah. of modern versus contemporary in just a bit.
Welcome back, still with Artwise. It's still in conversation with Gopal, Bose, and Shivani getting their thoughts uh, on the recovery process in the art market. Bose, the question we were raising with Gopal before we went into the break. Uh, where is there more appetite? Is it still with the modern masters? Is there still more appetite for contemporaries? Uh, you know, I mean, you pr probably look at price when you enter and, you know, the modern guys probably got at a high, higher price where you, whether you look at a Raza or the other works of the kind. Uh, is there a sustenance model for uh, the new guys that are coming in? They have a history, you know, when you talk about modern, when you talk about contemporary, you know, like, it's limited time, you know, we are talking about, when you talk about contemporary. A contemporary great artist can be, you know, you can see it as, so, as a kind of historical work they produced and stuff like that. It, it's like uh, how many works are available in the market. That is what people are looking at. Master's works are not really available. Mm -hmm. So it is, the value is like people are looking for masters. Contemporary artists, anyways, you get it. You know, so people wait for it. Maybe you don't, you don't get the right work if you don't pick up on the right time. I think it is something to do with your awareness, basically awareness to collect art. And so contemporary art, when you compare with the modern, I think modern masters pick up more price because, you know, like people are aware of that modern masters. Right. People are not really aware of contemporary history, contemporary who is who in the art world, you know. Okay, on yeah. the same subject, let's see what other contemporary artists like Jitish Kalat and Riaz Komu have had to say. <laughs> Global investors are discovering India's rich tradition of art, exemplified by priceless national treasures like Ravi Varma, Amrita Shergill and Rabindranath Tagore. The rich pluralistic tradition is being carried forward by Indian masters as well as contemporary artists whose artworks manage to remain commendably resilient amid the downturn. The Indian story is likely to rub off on new artists waiting in the wings to cross the million dollar mark. With global collectors hungry for great icons, Indian art has surely lots of surprises in store. Globally, there's a huge amount of interest in the art being made in this country. You know, and that's tied into two things. One is there's a great interest in the country. You know, and I think with that comes a certain interest in the art. And the other is the actual internal rigor of the art that's being made here. It's, it's almost a density of, of, of 50 years of history that is now allowing a set of young and mid-career practitioners to kind of go back and look at the recent history, the recent art history of this own country uh, and build on it. As an economy, India is now being compared with the West and China more favorably than ever before. Investors and collectors are getting drawn not only to India's booming economy, but also a promising art story. We have uh, several artists of high repute and caliber, you know, very, you know, uh, deep knowledge about. I mean, they are, most of them are scholars, you know, so that's also one reason, like, I mean, they are researching back on, you know, the quality of certain kind of works. I think uh, in that context, you know, they are getting, you know, certain kind of uh, respect now. Overall, you know, uh, people looked at India after China, like, I mean, because, uh, you know, it's an emerging economy and you know, it's also a slogan which is used to kind of boost, you know, Indian pulse. With international and domestic connoisseurs rushing to own a piece of the booming Indian art story, Chur is back in the market pondering the long-term potential of contemporary and new artists. Shivani, what is your own reading on the value of art at this point? If I'm not mistaken, I think in 2009, we saw the value of modern art fall by about 30% on average. Contemporary, meanwhile, fell about 60-70%. Does that pose a significant risk to an investor when he's looking at more contemporary art vis-a-vis -vis modern art? And thereby, that is why the prices of modern art are that much higher, because the downside, perhaps, is restricted. Well, as Gopal was saying before, it's all a question of demand and supply. The modern artists are X in number and there is a capping on how much and what quality you'll find. So in that sense, automatically the pricing will be driven higher. But I think the graph can only go up because in time these will be those limited commodities, these will be those established commodities and uh, these will be those artists which you'll grow to love in whatever space you're watching them. 
Gopal, uh, the kind of work our contemporary artists from India are bringing out is is world class. Is it's it's at par with what international artists are doing. Yeah. It's at par with what artists yeah, in China okay. are doing. Yeah, sure. Why do you think there's a difference in evaluation of their prices when we compare it to China or?